Thank you for Good morning. Good morning to you. Why are you gay? Who says I'm gay? Who says I'm gay? Uh, in their mouths. Yeah. Hey, oh. Hey, oh. Hey, oh. We have returned to the 40s to discover the roots of success. Speaking of roots, how about those African kids, huh? You are gay. You are... <laughs> you, you are gay. $17 to poop and pee all over these women. Oh, look. It's a... It's a, you know... It's a yellow-headed, pink-tailed booby. <laughs> uh. Ooh. Whoa. I don't want to suck that guy's dick. Look at him. He's got the little belly. He's got the uh, grown man tits. What the hell? Oh, hey. Yeah. Oh, it's time for fun facts. Yeah. Uh, and then what is this? This is a video. <laughs> Oh, they're Muslim, I see. Hello, and welcome back uh, to Pandering Hour. So, one thing I feel like I should mention, I'm going to pull this up over here, um, but just so everyone knows who's listening to this, um, this will be my second year doing the podcast. Um, slowly but shortly, we're getting up there. I noticed that my audience size is growing slowly but surely. A lot, I'm getting a lot more impressions off of, like, things and... Well, I just wanted to talk about that a little. I just wanted to talk a little bit more about, like, what this means to me and, like, my goals. I mean, I don't really want to do... I don't want to be, like, a Joe Rogan-type character... I just don't want to have to do a stupid job. <laughs> and um, this is something that's really easy for me to pour my effort into. Which means this is where I want my life to go, I think. So, I'm just going to keep doing comedy. Keep trying to get this podcast off the ground. This whole comedy career off the ground, whatever. Um, and yeah, thank you for joining me along for the ride. This is year two, episode... What episode is this? One, one thirty, one forty. One hundred. I only did thirty episodes this year. That sucks. I did a hundred in the first year. But to be fair, I didn't want to start doing the podcast again until I had the video capabilities like really fleshed out. Um, just because I I felt like I was podcasting to no one. Kind of still feels like that, but. Uh, I want it to be better. I want it to be a lot better. And I'm going to keep working on it to make it better. So let's actually get into the episode. Today on Pandering Hour, uh, we are going to be looking at the Solomon Islands. They are ranked, what? they're in the lower half, 150. Solomon Islands are ranked 150. Um, let's take a look. So... Solomon Islands is a nation of hundreds of islands in the South Pacific. Uh, has many World War II era sites. Uh, Guadalcanal, uh, a province and one of the archipelago's largest islands, honors the Allied soldiers at its U.S. War Memorial. I gotta see that. I have no idea. I've never heard of this place, the Solomon Islands. Whoa. Yeah. I mean, what even happens here? Um, it is a monument in the Solomon Islands. It was established as a tribute to the Americans and their allies who lost their lives during the Guadalcanal campaign uh, from 1942 to 1943. The capital city is Honiara, which is to the north. marks the 50th anniversary of the Red Beach landings. Um, U.S. War Memorial was dedicated on the 7th of August, 1992. Okay. Let's look at that campaign. What's that campaign about? Uh, Operation Watchtower? What's Operation Watchtower?
Okay. So, has military significance, but other than that, I've never heard of this place. Um, bu -bu -bu -bu. 6,000 men of the U.S. 1st Marine Division, commanded by Maj Gen uh, Major General Alexander Vandegrift, launched an ambig amphibious, <laughs> ambiguous, amphibious assault on Guadalcanal and Florida Island, surprising... 20 or Guadalcanal's 2,000 Japanese defenders. The landings were made uh, with strong naval and air support and met with little resistance, initial resistance. Um, and the airfield on Guadalcanal and the harbor on Florida Islands were seized in the first 36 hours. Uh, the Marines named the airstri airstrip Henderson Field after Maid Major Lofton Henderson, a Marine aviator who had perished while leading the bombing, uh, the bombing run at the Battle of Medway the previous month. Henderson Field would quickly become the center of gravity for the conflict on Guadalcanal. Um, the Japanese reacted quickly. Just before 2 a.m. on August 9th, they struck hard at the Allied naval force supporting the operation. The, Japan the force of Japanese cruisers and destroyers engaged the Allied fleet uh, in a furious night battle that came to be called the Battle of Savo Island. You know, this is making me think about some stuff I've been seeing about the U.S. military. Size of... U.S. military. Because our military is, like, leagues above ever anyone else's, right? Uh, active duty armies. Uh, well, we have the largest expenditure. Holy shit. Wait, hold on. Millions of con of constant U.S. dollars in 2015. So that's what's a hundred thousand million? That's a trillion. You're telling me that the United States spends six hundred and forty trillion dollars? I believe it. Okay, that's a shitload of money. What'd that get us? New military. Technology. Uh, by 2040, hypersonic weapons will be equipped with nuclear munitions traveling up to 20 times the speed of sound. Holy shit. These speeds will ensure surprise on enemies. If proven dependable, these hypersonic weapons will help deter threats from any country. Development has already begun. What does that mean, hypersonic technology? That's fucking cool. Imagine a missile... Imagine missiles are anything flying faster than the speed of sound. It is nearly an unfathomable speed. Uh, hypersonic weapons will be configured in three versions. Guided ballistic missiles, hypersonic cruise mi missiles, and boost glide missiles. Uh, these will give the U.S. the capability to deploy to employ conventional or nuclear weapons anywhere in the world in mere minutes. Uh, our need to protect our forces did not stop with exploding munitions, though. Uh, continued development in next generation aircraft will help the U.S. maintain air superiority. Um, holy shit. How fast is hypersonic? Hypersonic. Okay. Between three, we're just going to say 4,000 miles per hour. Um, so if this was here, distance from, well, uh, Texas, Texas to Austin, or sorry, tech. Austin, Texas to Portland. Hold on. So if it's 4,000 miles an hour divided by 60. Oh, whoops. Divided by 60. Divide by 60 again. So 66 miles in a minute. So 66 miles a minute. 70.6 divided by 66. So in 31 minutes, with a hypersonic weapon, 
I could launch something from Portland and hit Austin. That's crazy. How far away? New York. Oh, shit. So, in an hour, if we launch something from New York, it could hit the UK. Under an hour, actually. Because that was 2,000 miles in 30 minutes. This is almost way less than four. Wow. And that's just at the low end. That's if it's closer to, like, 37,000 miles per, se uh, per hour. Cool. What else we got? Eh, I'm already bored with this battle stuff. Let's go into the interesting facts. Or let's ju let's judge the women. Let's do that. Let's judge. So these young ladies probably were just you know hanging out, eating coconuts or whatever. And one day, just fucking Japanese and <laughs> two types of people they've probably never seen before. Think about it. Like, if in parts of the world, there are people that have never seen a white person. Parts of the world where they've never seen a black person. These people lived on an island in the middle of nowhere and were suddenly thrust into this a world war that I don't imagine knew they knew what was going on. I highly doubt that they were aware they're like oh yes russia and uh america and japan are all going to war and we could become a foothold they were probably like what the fuck this that guy's face is weird they've never seen an asian person they're like why is his eye where are his eyes different why is the skin different and then they saw us and they're like my god the white devils made it here okay let's see uh solomon solomon islands before World War Two. Um, okay, so ships of the Spanish explorer, of course the Spanish made it there. The nasty, nasty Spanish. Um in nineteen ninety five to in sixteen oh five, Spain again sent several expeditions to the island to establish a colony, uh, but they were unsuccessful. In 1767, Captain Philip Carteret, Carteret rediscovered the Santa Cruz Islands in Malta. Um, later, Dutch, French, and British navigators visited the island. The reception was often hostile. Um, let's see the Solomon Island Warriors. Oh yeah, these don't look like guys you want to fuck with. Look at that guy. He's got a fucking compass on his face. Just BAM! Are those teeth? What are those? They have wood shields. Just hatchets and wood shields. Okay. Dude. So, that not much has happened. Uh, they were known as the Sewer Islands when they were annexed to the Hawaiian Kingdom. Oh, hey, really? Yeah, where are where is this place in the world? It was a part of the... Wait, hold on. Are they that close? Because that seems super far away. Like, how could that be a part of Hawaii? That makes no sense. Because Hawaii is way over here. You're telling me all of this. Who does this belong to? This is micro Micronesia. What the hell is this place? Is this also a part of Hawaii somehow? Is this U.S. territory? It is a U.S. territory. 
So I guess this is Micronesia. Sorry. Let's try Micronesia. What is this tiny island? Dude, this world is so huge and interesting. I mean, this island is big enough to be its own little country, and it's like not even... It's like what? The size of... Not even the size of New York. And it's its own tiny country. It's probably a bunch of these. Yeah, this is also Micronesia. But imagine this life. Like, where even are... Like, imagine living on Mokil Village. And that's what you think the world is. When there's literally all of this. All this land. But the center of your world is there. Same thing for Hawaii. Like, imagine the Hawaiians. Like, this, this earth is so vast. How many miles around is the world? Holy shit, hold on. So, that hypersonic weapon. 20, 24 divided by 4? In 6 hours, that weapon can circle the Earth? If it stays at that speed. Man, that's crazy. Okay. Let's get back to the Solomon Islands. So, let's go to the interesting facts, because I'm getting way off topic. Uh, oh, yeah, these... Oh! They got their boobs out. Oh, no! It's one of those islands. Okay. Solomon Islands. So, English is the country's official language, but only around 1-2% to of the population speaks the language. Yeah, oh, gee, I wonder why. They're pretty hostile to non-islanders, it seems. There are at least 120 indigenous languages spoken across the Solomon Islands. Two languages have full Bibles and 10 have New Testaments. What? Dude, they're... Wait, what religion? What Bible? Are they Christian? Solomon Islands have been inhabited for thousands of years. Uh, evidence suggests Papuan speaking hunter-gatherers from New Guinea first arrived on Solomon Islands over 50,000 years before early Malaysian, or sorry, Melanesians arrived uh, in 4,000 BC. Uh, the Lipita people arrived around 3,000 years ago and occupied the island. Can you imagine, like, having, <laughs> having sex on an island start, and just starting a whole, you know, whole empire, a whole kingdom, your spawn completely dominating this whole island. That's what I'm about. That's that man shit that I want to do. That's what having kids is all about. Like, there had to be the first Jewish guy, right? The first German guy. The first um, Russian guy. First Mexican. After that, they all come from that guy. Um, by the way, if I'm being weird and quiet, which I, I feel like I am, um, I did take a heroic weed dose yesterday. I had a uh, hundred milligrams and I don't touch it very often and I 100% left my body. So I'm still returning to my body. If I'm being completely honest, like I got, it was too high. What happened was. At some point, I went completely nonverbal, where like I couldn't even perceive or fathom a sentence. Everything was just vibes and feelings. And then I just had to go to sleep, and I traveled through space-time, and then I woke up this morning. So, I'm like, I haven't been in my body for like four hours, easily. Um, but back to the Solomon Islands... In case you're wondering why I'm talking a little off. I'm just like, I am. I'm a little off. Uh, evidence suggests... Oh, already read that. 
Um, the popular, it's popular with scuba divers. Who cares about scuba divers? Island named after John F. Kennedy. Who cares? Uh, coral. Who's governing this place? Like, who's the president? President of Solomon Islands. Manase Sogar Sogavare. Is it, why is it famous? It's unspoiled. It's unspoiled and uncrowded. Okay. So there's there's nothing that happens on this island, and it's it's literally that wealthy. Okay. I think I get what this island is. So it is only a country in the fact that like it's worth something and because it's worth something, its GDP is higher than like these other countries. Because this is really tiny. Papua New Guinea and the Solomon The Solomon Islands are ranked higher than Papua New Guinea. Hold on. How is that possible? It's just because it's that beautiful there? Yeah, it's ranked two levels higher than this giant thing because what? There are more people here and those people eat people? Yeah, there are cannibals on this island. It makes sense that there would be cannibals here. You're on an island. Wow. And like, what even... U.S. disappointed Solomon Islands leader uh, Sogavare to miss White House summit? Um, the U.S. has disappointed Solomon Islands Prime Minister Mana, Manase Sogavare will not attend the Pacific Island Summit uh, with the U.S. President Joe Biden next week. The White House said on Saturday Biden will host a second summit with leaders to the Pacific Island Forum uh, at the White House on Monday as a part of his efforts to step up engagement with a region where the U.S. is in a battle for influence with China. China wants this place? Why would China... That's even farther. That's crazy. Why not Australia? Can Australia not even handle that? This whole area is, like, so mysterious to me. This is Oceania, right? So this is all Oceania? What does this mean? Marshall Islands, Indonesia. Okay. So it, it's a pretty big chunk, honestly. What an interesting section of the world. It really does feel like it's a, there's a new facet to the Earth because of this place. Like, think about it. This whole area is just islands. And then there's this one giant continent. And even that's not big. And then you, like, look at how far away that is from just the United States. Like, our world is massive. Africa is massive. Let alone Europe. This place, isn't this area of the world just fucking nuts? Like, think about Europe and Russia and the Middle East and Africa. Like, all of this is just constant war. And then we spread out from there. Like, from the Asia side down through these mountains. And I guess that's sort of shared with Australia. Which is so different from, like, what's going on over here in, like, America. Because if you think about it, there's, like, all of this new stuff that's here. I mean, there were Native Americans there before, but, you know, we, we took care of them. Um, and then the blending in Mexico, and then there's all this. Like, I usually look at the world as, like, the United States, South America, or, like, North America, South America, and then, like, Europe and Africa is right across from us. But then there's this. Like, this whole chunk of the world is its own huge chunk of the world that has so much diversity so much culture how is india that small is that really where's the true size of the world i want to compare uh australia Wow. And 
most of Australia is, un is uninhabited. Because there's parts of it that's just not livable, right? So let me see something. How much... Oop. <laughs> oh no, you could totally see that. No! That's gross. I'm going to have to double check that and edit it out. Um, how much of Australia is uninhabited? That's so much of Australia that's not inhabited. That's like... That's like just the coasts. That would be like if just the coasts and then a couple spots. That's like California, the northeast coast, and then Texas. What's the total population of Australia? Twenty-five million? So what, we're six times? Twenty-five, no, we're twelve times. Thirty-three, one, divided by twenty-five. Yeah, we're thirteen times bigger than Australia. Or we're the same size, but there's thirteen times more people. That is crazy. And then there's just little Solomon Islands. Hold on. There's got to be more interesting stuff about the Solomon Islands. What happens when you die? Solomon Islands. Facts. It's a country profile. Okay. Uh, more than 90% of islanders are ethnic Melanese, Melanesians. Um... But there has a large intensity and bitter rivalry between the Istanbuls, the Istabus, and the Guadalcanal, or between the Istabus on Guadalcanal, the largest island, uh, and migrant Malaysians, Maladians, from the neighboring island. Former British protectorate is striving to recover from civil unrest uh, between groups in 1998 to 2003 that brought it to the brink of collapse. What happened there? So there was a civil war. Whoa. Okay. Uh, deadly riots broke out on the Solomon Islands capital of Han Haniara uh, on the main islands of Guadalcanal. On, the, on November 24th, after Prime Minister Manasse Sogavari refused to meet with professors from Malaita, uh, the nation's most pro populous province, during the riots, businesses were looted and then torched, uh, predomin predominantly in Honiara, Chinatown, where three bodies were found. Uh, when the Prime Minister's residence and Parliament building were dangerously close to also being breached by rioters, Sogavare issued an urgent plea for international assistant. assistance. Australian forces began arriving on November 26th to restore the calm, uh, followed by those from Papua New Guinea, Fiji, and New Zealand. Why? What is happening in the Solomon Islands and why is it attracted international attention? Uh, the Pacific nation seems poised for further unrest following the defeat of the no-confidence vote against uh, Sogavari. Let me guess. He's corrupt. Okay. Let's see. Let me get this guy's name. Staging a coup with Chinese characteristics. Last week, dignitaries, including U.S. Ambassador to Australia Caroline Kennedy, gathered for a dawn ceremony with Bloody Ridge and so on Bloody Ridge, Bloody Ridge in Solomon Islands to commemorate the 80th anniversary of the start of the brutal battle for Guadalcanal. Um, Solomon Islands Prime Minister Manasseh Sogavare 
did not bother turning up to the commemoration, but U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman attended. She said afterwards that she really felt sorry for Sogovar, uh, as it was a missed opportunity for the Prime Minister to reflect on how the Japanese were turned back during a key moment in World War II. Okay, so it seems like the Solomon Islands like, you know, the Japanese a little bit more than us. Uh, so Gavari was in fact busy putting forward a bill to postpone the scheduled 2023 elections. His excuse for postponing is the island country hosting next year's Pacific Games, um, and they don't have the budget for both the games and an election. Uh, the proposed delay is very unpopular, uh, but will stir unrest with possible violence. Alarm bells should be going off in Canberra. The situation is dangerous. Uh, it's likely Sogavari and his backers in Beijing are hoping for more unrest so they can activate the China security detail. Uh, that would provide an even stronger excuse to hold off elections uh, that Sogavari is likely to lose for even longer. Uh, there are now Chinese police trainers in the country. Sogavari has publicly thanked the Chinese ambassador for 22 police vehicles, 30 motorcycles, two police water cannons, eight police drones, and advanced close personal protection equipment. Uh, democracy delayed is democracy denied. Okay. So this guy's definitely leaning more towards like a, a deal with China. Was he a, was the Solomon Islands a part of BRICS? Uh, if you don't know, BRICS, well, I'll pull up BRICS. Uh, Solomon Islands, um, a part of BRICS. Also, what are the BRICS countries? So BRICS refers to a certain emerging market countries, uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, and more that seek to establish deeper ties between the member nations to cooperate on economic expansion, including trade. Uh, the, can the countries act as a counterbalance to traditional Western influence. So basically, like if everyone's using the dollar, America is inherently... The dollar becomes more valuable because it's America's currency. Um, a lot of wars have actually been started um, over just the, what currency the world uses. Because as long as it's the American dollar, uh, America holds a lot of leverage. But, and people say like, oh, well, the American government's not that reliable. We're far more reliable than like the BRICS nations, which are far less stable Um which is at least the the current argument, but there's theories that Saddam Hussein and Gaddafi were killed by the CIA because they were interested in making a new uh, standard of currency, right? Didn't uh, Gaddafi want the gold standard? Gaddafi... Umar Gaddafi, one second. Uh, yes, this is what I was looking for. Uh, did Gaddafi plan to introduce an African currency backed by the gold reserves? Maybe, but there's little evidence for this. Um, some of the posts have been inspired... Okay, Africa Check has seen this claim several times. It's difficult to fact check because the original source of the claim is not publicly available. The claim is typically attributed to a comment in April of 2011. Uh, email to Hillary Clinton and then Secretary of State in 2015. The email was leaked to the public along with the cache of Clinton's other emails after a private email server was hacked. Uh, this email, like many other hacked emails, was from Sidney Blumenthal, who was at the time an employee of a non-profit Clinton Foundation. Blumenthal is a long, long-time friend and wi of wife and husband Hillary and Bill Clinton. Uh, the a White House employee and an advisor to Bill Clinton while he was still a U.S. president. Uh, reportedly, Hillary Clinton wanted to hire Blumenthal as a State Department aide while she was Secretary of State, but his hiring was vetoed by then-President Barack Obama. Uh, despite not being hired, leaked emails revealed that Blumenthal sent Clinton regular memos in the style of intelligence reports. Uh, these included at least 25 memos about Libya. 
In one email, Blumenthal wrote that Gaddafi's government holds uh, 143 tons of gold and similar amount of silver, a claim attributed to sources with access to advisors on Saif al-Islam Gaddafi. Okay, so because they're saying like maybe because he had all this gold, he could have started a gold standard. He had that option. But I thought he pitched that idea to somebody. Or maybe it's just a crazy conspiracy theory that I got hooked on. My bad. Um, let me see. So, does the Solomon Islands want to be a part of BRICS? Because it seems like, although they wanted, if that was the plan, to have Chinese um, government, like, police training come to the Solomon Islands, and then Australia gets involved, that kind of seems like the opposite of the plan. Because it said that when, let me see. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. At what point did it say that the... Pacific Nation, yeah. So right around here, so instead of going there, international rivalries have escalated in the Solomon Islands since Prime Minister Sogavari made the sudden decision to switch to the nation's diplomatic recognition from Taiwan to China. So he stopped recognizing Taiwan to China uh, in September of 2019. Taiwan has been a strong supporter of Malayata and the in the cessation of its aid to the province has worsened the economic disparities that are driving Malaysian anger towards the national government. The role of China, as well as Taiwan, the United States, and Australia have been prominent in the course of recent events. These countries' involvement has exacerbated the international fissures of the Solomons, but it's not the underlying cause of unrest. So, their part, the government wants to go with China. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so here is my assumption. Here's my assumption. I want to use these scenes. Here's my assumption. So it seems like in the Solomon Islands, the leadership of the country is going, yeah, we like to have a relation with China. We want to, because once they, I guess once you have a relationship with China, you can um, have people in China make your stuff. <laughs> like if, from a business perspective, if you're interested in getting a lot more money, right, which is what I'm assuming these the leaders of this island are looking for, is more wealth because the leadership of any country pretty pretty much just wants more wealth they don't want less no country wants less wealth you can hoard wealth better with how the chinese are doing it i think the chinese hold, hoard a lot of wealth from their people what's the wealth disparity in china wealth Let's see. Let's see if I'm being racist or not. Uh, China's unequal inequality levels used to be lower than Europe's in the 1970s, close to most egalitarian Nordic countries. Now, however, it's approaching U.S. levels. So, hold on. The wealth disparity in the U.S. is not as bad as in China, or it's worse? The bottom 50 earns about 15 of total income uh, versus 12% in the U.S., so, we're just a little bit worse than China. That's, hold on, what's China's GDP? Let me see something. Yeah, China's ranked 86. The U.S. is ranked, what, 15? 16. On the Human Development Index, you're way less likely to survive if you are in China. I mean, the United States, our ranking is 0.92 and China's is 0.75. That's nuts. So, it's because, I guess, because we have freedoms. We have more freedoms than the people in China, for now. But the top, I mean, 12% owns way more wealth. I mean, 80, what is that? 
of U.S.'s income is hoarded by 12% of the U.S. I mean, I guess, I guess that makes sense. I mean, that's kind of how it has to be, right? For a country to be this powerful. Because ultimately, you have to have... For there to be leadership in a country, there has to be power. There has to be a concentration of power somewhere. And power is ultimately influence, wealth, and weapons. I mean, there are, I, there are countries in the Middle East that didn't have that big of, you know, a presence on the world stage. But if they got a nuclear weapon, whoa, the leverage goes way up over other countries. Okay. All right, well, I think I'm going to end the episode there. Thank you so much for watching. I uh, appreciate you listening, and uh, bye-bye.